Hi folks, so the snail has mostly finished their roadmap for economic changes from uh, mid-2023, and we're going into 2024 now, so I figured this would be a good time to re-examine the topic of efficiently progressing through the tech tree. I'm going to be looking at the American aviation tree in this video um, for a couple of reasons, mostly because I've got almost the whole tree unlocked. So I'm going to be able to show you a lot of apples to apples, like side by side comparisons with a few things. Um, but everything I'm going to be talking about, the progression strategies, the math, the um, the equations for like calculating the, the reward bonuses, it all applies to tanks and boats. So, you know, if you're a tank main, don't immediately click off the video because you, you, you see planes on the screen here. Everything I'm going to be talking about is going to apply to to tanks and boats as well. Um, with one minor exception, and it's actually the first thing I'm going to talk about. So one of the main things that the snail did in the economic roadmap is they condensed the tech trees greatly. A lot more vehicles in the aviation trees are in folders now. Um, they have said that they're looking at doing this to the ground trees, so we might see an update sometime like mid-year where they they folder a lot more tanks but right now they've added a lot more planes into folders now if you're new to the game what that means is if you like take a look at the icon um on the tree here for the f3 f2 it's just a flat rectangle the sb2u kind of looks like a folder because there's actually more than one plane in here and they're they're condensed in the tech tree and that's that's good for a couple of reasons the way that the tech tree works, you know, you can see these arrows, right? You you need to research this plane before this plane before this plane. It's it's pretty linear. However, with a foldered vehicle, you only need to research the first vehicle in the folder before you move on to the next thing in the tech tree. Like if I want this PBM1 Mariner, I do not have to research both Catalinas. I only need to get the first one. That makes the second vehicle in the folder or like the third vehicle if there is one um an optional research objective now i'm going to throw up a quick overlay on the screen here they also dramatically reduced the cost of foldered vehicles you can see the sb2u2 um is the top vehicle in the folder and all of the other the rank one single seat planes here at br 1.7 are all 2900 rp to unlock well the sb2u3 is only 2,000 RP to unlock because it's in a folder. So that's the other advantage of a lot of these vehicles going into folders. And like with stuff like the F-16, like the, the F-16A ADF, um, I've already got it unlocked, so I can't show you the exact uh, RP requirements. But like the points you need for this like came down dramatically when they threw it into the folder. You know, same with a few of these other aircraft, like the A-7 and whatnot. You know, it's going to be a lot easier to fill out the tech tree now. Um, now, in order to move into the next rank of the tech tree, and this, some of this may seem like basic remedial information, but I promise I'm going to tie all of these different things together by the end of the video here. When you're going from one rank of the tech tree to the next, you need to unlock uh, a set number of vehicles before you can move forward. Like, for example, if I get into rank two, and I research like the P-36, the P-40, and the P-51C, I can't immediately move up to the P-51 early in rank three uh, because I believe it's it's four, I think, um, four vehicles that you need to research in each rank before you move on to the next rank. With a couple of the tech trees, like I think for Israel and like at the higher tiers, um, I think that goes down to three, not four. Um, but in either case, there is a hard requirement. You have to research a set number of vehicles before you move into the next rank. Now, I want to show you... Um, this is actually going to be a really good example. I want to talk about getting some bonuses for a minute. Now, this is going to play into some advancement strategies I'm going to talk about later. But the research, the tier bonus that's listed over here on the right-hand side, this is a new column that was not displayed on the screen until fairly recently. This shows me that if I research all three of these upgrades, I'm going to get a bonus 414 research points. 
and that's showing me, you see, the zero out of 2070. If I spade this plane, if I research all of the upgrades and get the spade icon for it on the tech tree there, if I unlock all this, that's going to get me an extra 2,070 research points. So just by unlocking all the upgrades to the plane, you know, it's going to give me like an extra chunk of research points that's going to apply towards whatever I'm researching, not towards the P51C10 that I've already unlocked. So like if, if you, you can't like uh, this 414 bonus that goes to researching new vehicles, not researching extra components. That is a, a common misconception. So these tier bonuses will advance your research a little bit. Now, if I would take a look at, um, let's see if I can find a good example. I think this P-51. Okay, perfect. Here's here's an example. So here's a plane, the P-51 D-30. Um, I flew this a lot way back in the day. However, after I already had this plane spaded, they added in these Mark 78 napalm bombs that I do not have unlocked. Now, you're going to see here, I've already received the research bonus. So, if you have a plane, like, um, if I were to unlock these bombs, I would not get this research bonus over again. I've already received it. So, unfortunately, you can't cheese the system by going back and getting, like, the engine fire suppression um, and, like, the napalm bombs on things you've already spaded and stuff to get some quick bonus. Unfortunately, that doesn't work. Um, one other thing that they have not yet implemented is if you max out a tech tree, this is on their roadmap, so it should be coming um, in like the first half of 2024. It's the last thing they've, they haven't implemented. If you finish a tech tree, you're supposed to be getting a bonus when you start researching another tech tree. Um, I don't think... Personally, I think they're having a hard time figuring out how to do the math on that, and that's why it's taking a little while. Uh, but that is a feature that's going to be coming. Now, I want to take a look, and this is this is going to be really important, um, and it's going to tie into how we cheese the system and everything I'm going to be talking about for the rest of the video. So if you're if you're alt tabbed out and you're like listening to this as you play, I strongly encourage you to like bring up the video and, and pay close attention to what's on the screen here. I'm taking a look at the stat card for the A4B Skyhawk. I want to draw your attention down towards the bottom where it has the max vehicle research efficiency and the reward percentage modifiers. Now, the max vehicle research efficiency ranks five through seven because this is a rank six vehicle. I'm going to be talking about that in a little bit. So I'm just going to skip over that for right now. But the reward percentage of 624%, look on the right-hand side, there's a math equation. The base modifier for the plane is 2.08 times 100%. And you got to remember your, your algebraic order of operations here. So what that's actually going to be is the 2.08 times 300. I have the flat 100% bonus that you get just on everything. I have an additional 100% bonus for having a premium account. And I have the talisman on this plane. So I have a 100% bonus because of the talisman. That's where um, when you get a talisman, and that's something, again, I'm going to be discussing in a minute. Um, just remember this when we get to that point. That's where the talisman bonus enters into the math. Um, and I'll also, I'll throw up on the screen, I'll pop a booster and throw up a quick overlay to show you. When you pop a booster, the bonus from the booster also shows up inside the parenthesis. So taking a quick look at this, uh, let's do some Tim math. Um, the 2.08 times 315 is what? 655.2? So they, they round that down to 655. So that's how the math works with popping boosters, having a premium account bonus, having a talisman bonus and everything onto the plane. Um, that's that's how that's going to work there. Okay, so now I'm going to take a second and talk about advancement strategies. The first thing uh, that I'm going to suggest before anything else is once per day, you can do air assault arcade. 
you can you can come into your your game mode selection and do air assault arcade now you can see there it's got some br brackets so you're going to want to take that into account in terms of what vehicle you use but once per day you can play this game mode um is it going to show me it's not going to show me what's in the trophy uh but anyway point is um when you do the air assault arcade it's a PVE battle where you're just shooting down a bunch of bombers and strike aircraft and you get a booster out of it. So you can get a free booster, you know, one of these boosters um, once per day. A lot of people forget that that air assault arcade is there. Um, but if you're sitting down for like a day of grinding and, you know, you're you're getting ready to like spend a whole Saturday afternoon grinding out some some vehicles, um, do that air assault arcade and get yourself a booster. If you don't have any, uh, it's a quick way to get one basically for free. Um, the ground assault arcade works the same way, but I, I personally find that game mode a lot more difficult to actually complete. But anyway, getting back into the tech tree. So now I'm going to talk about strategies for moving up through the ranks. And there, there are a number of things to consider. The two main tactics are to have specific grinder vehicles or to just grind everything. Now, I've done a mixture of both over the years. Um, I've been playing this game since, like, before the public beta um, for a long time. So the vehicles I used to research, and, like, I unlocked basically, ev like, all of the prop vehicles and a few of the early jets in the American tech tree um, back under the old progression system when there were 20 ranks, um, not... Eight. So my my tech tree progression is a little bit of a weird example, but like when I went up through the Swedish tech tree and the Israeli tech tree and like some of the ones that were added later, like China, um, I tended to use a mix of these tactics. So the first thing that a lot of players do is you find a vehicle that you're good at and you just grind the hell out of it. For example... Um, you could pick like this B-25, right? And I could get up in a rank two, use this B-25 because it's got that efficiency for ranks one through three. And I'll, again, I'll, I'll touch on that in just a minute. Um, and use this one plane and just fly it and fly it and fly it and fly it to unlock the rest of rank two or everything you want in rank two. And even up into rank three. Let's say that you get to rank three and you you research into rank four and you get the p51 d30 or you know maybe the b17 and you're just not very good with these rank four planes and you're having a hard time and it's frustrating you can still use a rank three grinder you know like let's say this p61c you're really good with um you can still use this to grind out everything in rank four with no penalties or delays of any kind to your progression. All right, that is an entirely valid thing to do. Um, if you just, you're not interested in any of these vehicles or you want to leapfrog or whatever. Um, the other strategy is to just try and spade every plane relying on the tier bonuses for each plane to add up and contribute to the research into the next tree, uh, into the next rank. So by the time you are done spading all of this stuff here in rank two, you've already got a whole bunch of stuff here in rank three already unlocked, ready to go. And then you move into rank three, you've got a whole bunch of vehicles unlocked, but you haven't flown them yet. And you just go through one at a time and spade all of these letting the research points and the tier bonuses stack and compound into researching out rank four. Then you get to rank four and you repeat the process and you sort of, you know, you move up the tech tree that way by spading all of the aircraft of the rank before. Both of those advancement strategies, the, the focused grinding versus the spade grind everything, both of those are totally valid. And I've, I've kind of done both. I tend to go with the spade grind everything for ground vehicles. Uh, but for my air trees, um, you know, 
under the modern progression system, um, I've tended to focus on having like one or two grinder vehicles in each rank that I'm, I'm really good with. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is game modes. Um, we're going to talk about realistic arcade and simulator battles. Now, I'm, I'm going to oversimplify this a little bit, so please try to curb the your urge to do an actually type of a comment. But at the lower tiers, and by lower tiers, I'm, I'm talking like ranks one through four. Arcade battles are going to queue a lot faster than realistic and sim. And once you get into the higher jet tiers, realistic battles are going to queue faster than anything else. If I, if I jump into a queue for realistic battles with this F-15, I'm going to be popped into a match probably in 30 seconds right now. Um, you can see there's 200,000 players online when I'm, when I'm recording this. If I were to jump into the realistic battles queue in like the P-36, I might be sitting there for a couple of minutes. Because for whatever reason, um, more people do arcade battles at lower tier, more people do realistic battles at higher tier. And that's a topic I touched on. Um, I have a separate video. I'll put a link in the description, shameless plug, on how to make the transition from props to jets. Um, and that's a topic I went into more detail on there. But the point for what we're talking about here is the rewards you get are going to be dramatically different. The rewards you get per individual kill are going to be a lot lower in arcade battles than they are in realistic battles and are going to be lower and realistic than they are in sim. The trade-off is arcade battles are faster paced. You can get more kills more quickly, and very often the match will be over very quickly. Whereas in realistic battles, um, at least in the prop tiers, before you get into some of the like supersonic jets, the battles are much more slower paced. You get fewer games in per hour. And simulator battles, that's that's its whole thing. You know, the, the duration on that can kind of vary. Now, the reason I bring this up is there are a couple of strategies that, that you want to think about. Um, you can do arcade battles and try to focus on getting more matches done per hour and more kills per hour even though the value of those individual kills or like individual ground targets bombed is going to be lower. Whereas with realistic battles, you won't get as many matches in per hour, but each individual match will have a higher score. So which way you go with that, if you're, you know, again not getting into like personal preference about the the realistic battles versus air battles like flight controls you know there are other differences excuse me i'm only talking about progression at the moment um so which way you go with that is going to be a little bit of a personal preference in my opinion neither one is better or worse until you kind of get like into the jet tiers once you get into like rank 5 and 6 I would strongly suggest focusing on realistic battles um, for progression because what happens there is the arcade battles, the queue is longer than realistic battles and the realistic battles matches. Your vehicles are fast enough where you're not spending 10 minutes just flying towards the enemy team anymore. So the matches are going to be over just as quickly as arcade battles. And, you know, assuming that you're getting like a similar a similar score, a similar number of kills or destroyed targets per hour, your net research is going to be a lot greater. So that's sort of the, the thing to think about there. Um, another tactic, uh, another strategy I, I want to share with you is using backups. So let's take a look at this P-51H5NA. This is, this is a very good plane. If I'm sitting down for a day of grinding and let's say i'm going to be doing arcade battles and i'm using the single plane grinder method where i'm using this p51h in rank four to grind out most of rank four and five might be worth it to activate 
a whole bunch of boosters. You can see here, I've got a whole bunch of these uh, backups, a whole bunch of these dumb backups that I don't, I don't use too often. Um, not to use them every match. So again, let me find, all right, yeah, here's some backups. So when you apply backups on a vehicle, that lets you spawn into a match an additional time. So the sort of strategy I'm getting at here is when you stack your backups on like this P51, let's say I've got like 25 backups on it. I'm in an arcade battles match and my team is losing. And let's say I get like one or two kills and I get shot down. Maybe don't use a backup. Maybe go back to hangar. However, if I'm in a match and I've got four to six kills and it looks like maybe my team is winning and I get shot down, pop the backup and spawn back in and start kicking butt again. Because one of the other things you want to think about is that you get additional bonuses at the end of a match if your team wins. So if you're in a match and you're confident that your team is going to win, do everything you can to maximize your score for that individual match. If you've got backups on your vehicle, that's when you want to use them because it'll maximize your score in a match that you're going to win and get the victory bonuses as well. So it's, it's all about like a lot of these things we're talking about. It's all about stacking the math and, and hacking the math equation. Like when we looked at the A4B Skyhawk, we talked about how you got the 100% bonus, the 100% for premium and the 100% for talisman. Um, and you know, if you throw a booster again, that's where it goes. The same principle applies. If you're going to win the match, use your backups, increase those modifiers. Now, here's where we're going to talk about the efficiency bonuses. And this will segue into our next topic of premium vehicles. Let's take a look at this AV8C. This is um, going to be a good apples to apples kind of example because there's a premium Harrier that's extremely similar to it. So you see the max vehicle research efficiency down on the bottom of the stat card, ranks five through seven. And this plane is in rank six. What that means is when you're flying the Harrier, you're only getting that full bonus. When you are researching something one rank below the same rank or one rank above. And same thing if I pick a plane in rank three, you can see there on the bottom of the stat card, the max research efficiency is two through four. So one rank below, same rank or one rank above. So if I'm flying this F-15, oh yeah, and I'm researching this F-84G that I just never bothered to pick up along the way, I'm not going to be getting that full 512% bonus because the F-84G is in rank five and that is outside the max vehicle research efficiency. And the, the reason that they've implemented that system is essentially just to stop you from using like a rank one plane and grinding out the whole freaking tech tree. You know, it's to kind of try and force you to actually move along in the tech tree as you, as you unlock new things. And, you know, from a game mechanics standpoint, that kind of makes sense. Now, this is going to segue into our next topic, and that is premium vehicles, premium accounts, and, like, if you're going to spend money, where to spend it. So, what is a premium vehicle going to do for you? I can answer this pretty quickly. We're going to take, again, a quick look at the AV-8C and the AV-8A. Now, you can see here on the left is the AV-8C. This is the, the Harrier out of the tech tree. And on the right is the AV-8A. That's going to be the, the premium one. Look at the research reward. The base modifier is almost the same. It's actually lower on the premium vehicle. It's the 2.2 for the premium Harrier versus the 2.26. It is a common misconception that premium vehicles research faster. They do not. The difference is the premium Harrier comes with a free talisman. So if you, again, you look at the math equation inside the parenthesis, you've got your flat 100% on both of the planes, plus my 100% 
premium account on both of the planes. The premium Harrier has a free talisman. And I'll get, again, I'll get to the talisman in a minute. And additionally, the Silver Lions modifier is actually going to be a, a, a bit better. Um, the reason is, you see, there's an extra yellow 2.0 on the Premium Harrier's Silver Lions. Premium vehicles get additional Silver Lion bonuses. Um, that is outside of the, the normal math. You can see the equation there is, is a little different because of that extra 2.0 modifier. So Premium vehicles are going to research essentially the same speed with a talisman. However, they're going to get silver lions and grind mission, you know, the silver lion rewards a lot more efficiently. So if you're broke and you've got a premium vehicle, that's the one you want to use. Or if you need to grind up silver lions for, you know, buying something or whatever, uh, a premium vehicle is going to do that a little bit quicker for you. Assuming the same level of performance, if I'm flying both of these Harriers out, let's say getting one kill per match and blowing up two ground targets, um, I'm going to get roughly equivalent research rewards if I had the talisman on the AV-8C, but my Silver Lion rewards are going to be dramatically better double over on the AV-8A Premium Harrier. So that's... That's one of the primary things that premium vehicles are getting for you. I also want to draw your attention to the max vehicle research efficiency that we just talked about a minute ago. You're going to see on the premium Harrier, it's ranks one through seven. So for a premium vehicle, instead of being one below same rank or one above, it's rank one all the way to one above. So if we cut back into the tech tree here, I'm researching this F-84G-21. If I'm using the F-105D, I'm not going to be getting the full research efficiency because the research efficiency is 6 through 8. However, if I use the F-5C, its research efficiency is 1 through 8. So I absolutely can use the F-5C to grind out the F-84G with maximum efficiency without losing any points in my, my mission rewards at the end of the battle. So this leads to the perception that like premium vehicles are faster grinders. They're not for vehicles of the same rank, talisman notwithstanding. What they are better at is researching things way below them in the tech tray. So if you are just getting into the American tech tree, let's say you're an Italian main and you've researched up through the Italian tech tree and you're really excited about this F-15 or this F-104 or whatever, and you want to get into the American tech tree, having a premium vehicle, it, you know, if you are inclined to buy a premium vehicle, one of the advantages you would get with it is that like, if I already know what I'm doing and I can, I can fly in you know, the mid high tier jet meta comfortably. And I can fly this F5C and not just get freaking destroyed every time I fly it out. I could take this plane and very efficiently grind through a bunch of this lower level stuff that I might not care about if I'm only interested in getting to the jets or like the higher tier super props without sacrificing any efficiency. So it's kind of a way to, to leapfrog ahead there um, in terms of the the research efficiency that you get for, you know, actually doing mission points and objectives. That's what you're going to get out of a premium vehicle. Is it worth it? That's up to you to decide. Now, this is where I want to talk about talismans. Now, you can see here all of the, the gold icon premium vehicles. They have this little wreath above, their, above them. That's showing that they come with a talisman. And the only vehicle, I think the only one in the, in the American tech tree, yes, um, that I have with a talisman is this A4B. You can see the A4B has that golden wreath on it. Now, what that means is that at some point in the past, the A4B was a massive grinder for me, by the way. I, I made very good use of this plane back in the day. Um, I ponied up the however many GEs it was, and I purchased a talisman for this plane. Now... What the tal it, it is a misconception that a talisman 
turns a tech tree plane into a premium. It does not. Because you do not get, and again, as, as we looked at that comparison, I'll throw it up on the screen again. Um, you know, with, with the Harriers, if you, if you throw the, the talisman onto a plane and like, I compare that to this a four B here, the a four B is getting that extra hundred percent modifier inside the research points parenthesis math equation, but it's max vehicle research efficiency is still only five through seven. So you are not turning the plane into a premium. You are adding another 100% inside the parenthesis of the research points math equation only. You are not getting any enhanced Silver Lions rewards. You are not getting any additional efficiency bonuses. So that's what a talisman does for you. There are a lot of ways to get talismans. Um, you can get them sometimes in like the trophy boxes and stuff like that. In my opinion, um, talismans are something you should do kind of sparingly. If you are confident that a particular vehicle is going to, if you're using like the single vehicle grinder method that we talked about sort of towards the beginning of the video, and you're confident that some vehicle you're in, you're good with it, you're consistently earning with it, that's going to be a good sort of a, a place to put a talisman if you are inclined to get one. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is boosting research. Now, what I mean is using GEs to just flat out boost research. And I'm, I'm going to put a quick little overlay on the screen here. Um, the Tornado IDS is a, a top tier jet in the German tech tree. Look at that. And I don't, I don't have any research into it. You can see there, I, I'm at 400,000 to, to unlock that. It's the last German jet I've got to unlock there. 8,889 GEs in order to unlock that plane. That is not a very good conversion rate. Now, if we take a look at the conversion rate, in my case, of U.S. dollars, because I'm in the U.S., of U.S. dollars to GEs, that's going to be like almost $50. You know, what's that going to be like? 45 U.S. dollars. That's going to be roughly the same cost as buying a premium pack vehicle like out of the web store. So it's not an especially good conversion value to spend GEs to unlock planes with the with the boosted research. You still can. Um, and maybe for like lower rank stuff, like, you know, if I if I wanted to, if I was in another tree and I wanted to like get this PBM1 Mariner that I just never bothered, you know, like the they added in a lower tier plane and I'm already past that and I don't feel like grinding it. Unlocking, it's only going to be like maybe 300 GE. That might not be a bad value. But for anything above like rank two, once you get into like rank three, any of this higher tiered stuff, that conversion ratio um, is very poor. And I do not recommend using your GEs in that way. So what do I recommend using GEs on? The answer is very simple. Premium account. Now, I want you to take a look here at what we're, what we're looking at. What do you get with a premium account? You get a lot. You get 100% research points in all game modes. That's added into the parenthesis in that math equation on the stat card. You also get a whole bunch of bonuses for Silver Lions, depending on the game mode that you're in. You also get... Um, a bunch of the economic changes they added in. Um, your your repair bill is going to be a lot lower if you've got a premium account. It like sort of flatlined that. Um, you can have you know up to four vehicle decals. You can ban missions. Um, I'm sorry, ban maps. Like if I go into realistic battles, I can I can decide there are some of these maps I don't want. Like like the southeastern city, my God, I am so burnt out on this map. I banned the hell out of it because I just don't want anything to do with this map anymore. Um, that's one of the things that that premium accounts get you. However, in my opinion, having a premium account is the single best way 
that you can efficiently grind through the tech tree because every one of your vehicles is getting that 100% bonus inside the parenthesis. No matter what vehicle you're in, you're getting that extra 100%. Now, I also think premium account is a good value because let's take a look for a minute. You can get one day of premium account for only 190 GEs. So let's say you get some GEs out of like a loot chest or like the daily login bonus or a wager or something like that. And you're sitting on like 500 GEs that you've got kicking around and you're getting ready to settle in for a Saturday afternoon of grinding. That would be a really good time to do 190 GEs on one day of premium account. Because that's, that's going to be an, a very efficient use of those 190 GEs. Alternatively, um, you know, if, if you get premium account in bulk, like 30 days, um, it's at 1900 for 30 days, uh, you know, assuming we're doing a month, not any of the, the other ones. Um, what's that turn out to be? Yeah, so that's going to be uh, like about $12 a month if you were to do it monthly for, for a premium account. That's very comparatively priced to other MMOs. You know, that's that's similarly priced to like a World of Warcraft subscription or like what freaking Amazon Prime or any of that. So if you are inclined to spend money on the game and no judgments, I don't, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, wallet warriors. I, I don't I don't pay any attention to that noise. Um, if you're inclined to spend money on the game, and, you know, Gaijin, it's a free-to-play game. Gaijin's got to make money somehow. Um, so if you want to pay in, in my opinion, getting premium account time is the most efficient and effective thing you can do in terms of streamlining and getting your research path um, to be as efficient as possible. It's the best value you can get. I'm going to basically wrap things up there. Um, that's sort of what we're looking at in 2024 for moving up through the tech tree. And again, I'm not normally one of those like, let me know in the comments below type of people. Uh, but if you've got any additional tips or strategies that you have found and used to get going through the tech trees efficiently or quickly, uh, feel free to drop a comment because, you know, I'm not perfect. I probably missed a couple of things. And, you know, the grind is awful even after the economic changes they've implemented. So we can all learn from each other and all move a little bit quicker through getting this stuff unlocked. As always, thanks for watching.